once you have designed the product, then you may or may not go into market testing. Um, and market testing is essentially market research. Uh, the reason you may not go into market research is because you may not have the time or the money to do it. Um, and this is actually relatively new. A lot of big companies, you've heard of Kickstarter? Yeah. And those kinds of, of crowdfunding campaigns, crowdsourcing, what's happening is originally those were for you know people who had great ideas and were just looking to get support to build it. What we're finding is even large companies now that have new product development budgets will use a Kickstarter starter or a crowdfunding type campaign just as a way of generating interest or seeing whether or not there's a market for it. So let the customers tell us how fast we want this built. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the comment was, um, if from, a, from an investment perspective, if I'm trying to get funding for a new product and I go to a bunch of investors and the product doesn't work out, I might get a second chance. But if I go directly to a Kickstarter campaign, if it fails on Kickstarter, then I'm dead and buried because I went to my market first and my market told me. So that, that's a good consideration is you go to the market first, the market sinks it, it's gone. but. Maybe it's better to find that out before you go through a lot of investor. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, a, there's a saying that, that, that good marketing makes a bad product fail faster. <laughs> you had a comment? So you're talking about, again, one, one of the benefits of a crowdsourcing campaign is you get interaction with your customers as you're developing the product. Um, so you, you develop those relationships, you get the feedback, what you like, what you don't like. Again, it's, it's kind of, you know, for, for, for individuals trying to bring a, a product to market, it's great, but because of the, the, the value of interaction, the feedback with, with customers, um, some companies are now just using this instead of uh, as part of the development process, figuring, you know, let the customers tell us whether or not we should be working on this anymore. Um, and I believe there's a change in the law up until, I think it was just fairly recently, I should not guess, um, with the crowdsourcing campaigns, you could only get product, you couldn't buy equity in a startup. And I believe they've just changed the investing rules so that um, the mom and pop investor can invest in a crowdsourcing campaign for equity in the company rather than just a, a sample of the product. Um, and they've greatly lowered the standards for what it takes to be considered a serious investor. So the product succeeds. We have tested it. It's, it's, it's great. Uh, so then we want to take it to market. How do you go to market? And there's really two approaches to market. One is a global launch. Um, and this is where you introduce it to all of your markets simultaneously for mass market goods or for goods where you're looking for a pioneering effect. Um, you want to hit the market first. Um, the disadvantage is that it's very expensive and if the product's a bomb, it's a very expensive bomb. The other approach is to have a limited launch or a rollout. And with a limited launch or a rollout, it's a much smaller initial investment. You might you know, launch in maybe one geographic area or one city. And then if the product is successful, you use the funds that you get from that city to self-finance the, the, the growth to other cities to the national launch. Um, it's more of an organic process. Um, the advantage is that it's less risky because you're not investing that much and the product will tell you whether or not it is gaining traction in the marketplace. 
The disadvantage is if it's going to be a competitive marketplace, it gives your competitors a chance to pioneer in the markets that you're not launching in right away. So a couple of approaches, which is best depends on your situation.